in, as we go through our everyday ordinary lives, the many tasks of life, how is it does it become heavy, such a burden, complicated, awkward, bulky, all of that? So many things to do. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing. And that's because we source it through stories. We source it through the way we're supposed to do things, the way we have to do things. Instead of just simply knowing, okay, these are things that have to be done, so be it, I'm going to get it done. And just get it done. Not to angst about or to be concerned about what the next task is going to be. That can add a lot of weight. By looking at the task that's in front of you, getting that done, bring it right through completion, then you can address the next one. Yes, being aware that, yeah, there's other things you have to do, but if you're concentrating on them instead of getting on getting this one done, the burden, the heaviness gets more. So when we see the essence of what each task, each aspect that we're going through in life on an everyday basis, and that means simply going to the store to pick up that loaf of bread, got to get, get gas in the car, got to go pick the kids up, okay, got the laundry to do, got to do this, got to do the got to do the got to do's. Okay. All right. So how can that we go merge the non-ordinary into that vine of the loaf of the bread? By going beyond the story. By knowing the essence of bringing every task that we do to completion. That's simply, it is complete now. Then I move on. So... It's more than the words, but the perceptual sense, that feeling of this is now intact. There's no loose ends. We all know about loose ends. We know how that can feel uncomfortable when we always know that there's, I still got to do that. I still got to do that. I did all that part of that task, but I got this now I have to still do. Okay. Rise, soar above the story. Soar above the belief. All that the lower self is going to throw in about being not safe. Well, you have to do this because if you don't do this, then that could happen and so forth. Go beyond that. Okay, I'm getting this done. Done. Merge your essence. Always, always. Anything that you do, any role that you must take on, always fill it with your essential self, your higher perceptual primal self. And in that way, the essence is completed. And all the little loose ends are gone. This is very important. Every one of us has a list of things current, in the near future, in the far future, what could have been done, well, look at what is now. Fill it now. How is it that you go through these things by what others are expecting of you rather than what you know you can do? Not through your story, but through the guidance of your higher perceptual primal self. What do you know you can do? The wonderful thing about this, the magic of it is that when you fill any of these with your, your higher perceptual primal self, it's far more spectacular, splendid than anyone's expectations, including your lower self's expectations, can ever be imagined. Things just open up that way. 
So how is it that you bring the magic into your everyday life? How is it that you bring that non-ordinary into everything that you do? How often do you follow that, that perceptual instinct, that ping that says, get that one, not that one, okay? They all, they, they all the tomatoes all look the same. Why should it matter if I take this tomato or that tomato? As silly as that might sound and as trivial, follow that. That's a good practice in following the guidance of the higher perceptual primal self. Even if the lower self has no idea what you're doing, just do it anyway. It, it works every single time, every single time. We all know about that when we don't listen to that intuitive that says, when you leave today, make the right turn instead of the left, and then the lower self jumps in. But we always make the left turn because that's where the coffee shop is, and I want my coffee, and if I don't have my coffee, I'm going to feel miserable, and I'm going to take it out on everybody, and the, the story writer that it is. So if you make that right turn... You'll find out later there was a six-car accident on that left side. If you don't, hmm, you'll find out maybe the hard way. So by simply following the guidance, irregardless of the lower self wanting to say to you, no, 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 no. You know, we have a guideline that we follow, the more resistance the more resistance I feel, the faster I run to do whatever I'm resisting. And then the illusion that the lower self has written about that goes away immediately. Huh. Wasn't anything there anyway. Yeah. Now you know that. It's bringing in the magic by listening doesn't make any sense and it will change your daily life very very much so in ways that can be so subtle that unless you are fully conscious and choose to stay that way you may miss it that's the other part of this of merging the non-ordinary into an ordinary and that is by being conscious, waking up, being conscious and staying that way. Even when the lower self is giving you all the justifiable reasons why it's better not to pay any attention to that stuff. Always pay attention to that stuff. It makes things a whole lot better. We're going to talk about what you can do beyond what was just said in bringing the sacred into your everyday life. You see, by being conscious and merging the non-ordinary into the ordinary, you are always then walking in the sacred because it all is sacred. Everything is. And if you look higher and deeper, you will know that. And the way you do that is by seeing anew rather than through the old eyes. This is... And when you know, when you do this, it's amazing how wonderful you feel. It's as though the burdens have been lifted. Huh. That, that's all I ever had to do. Yeah, that's all you ever had to do. Very, very important. One of these ways, and I do encourage all of you who don't have it uh, to create one, is somewhere in your home where you live, create a sacred altar. And this is some place that is private to you that won't be disturbed by anyone. 
and anything that you know through your higher perceptual primal self as your guided goes on that altar. And I encourage you to spend some, a bit of time each day with it, perhaps before you go to sleep, asking it for guidance and dreams, helping you to remember your dreams, helping you through some situation in your life. Just to have this. And you don't have to have one altar. Where I am, I have several altars. I have one main altar, but I have others. And each are of equal importance. There's not one that's more than another. They're all equal. But there's several. It's important to do that because that consciously, that, that keep, helps to keep you conscious. I should say it that way. Because this brings to you the sacred within you. Awakened it. It's already there. It just awakens it even further. And for those of you who already have a sacred altar, it may be from time to time, if you're not with your altar every day, to have a look. Is there something that it's time for it to move on? Is there something to be moved in it? Is there some change that is to happen? Follow that guidance, that higher perceptual guidance, and your life merges naturally, flowing the non-ordinary into the ordinary. It does make differences that there's no language, human or non-human, as far as I know, that can truly describe it. You have to do it to know it. We are going to journey, as we always do. And just when what you have gained now, because, you know, in these gatherings, these are not just talkings. These were working at the energetic, so that's why it's being felt. And as it's being felt, not only through each and every one of us, it is being felt, intuitively at least, everywhere else. So we're going to have a look in a little while. We're going to journey through that Cape Pacha and have a look as to what we see in the world now in the Cape Pacha, the energetic grid of the Pachamama, the Mother Earth. In a moment, Joseph, I'm going to ask you to open the phones and I'd like to hear from, from you, or any of you, what even the teachings that were just given, what has it awakened in you? What do you know? Okay, Joseph, you can open the phone. Let me know. We're good. <clears throat> okay. Any of you? The teachings that were just given. What did it touch in you? What did it awaken? Anybody? Well, this is Susan. It it awakened in me. Um, well, just the the remembering that all life is sacred and everything that you do. It's kind of interesting when you had said, um, just do the task a little, a little bit earlier. It's mm-hmm. true. I noticed that when I don't put so much energy into, oh, my God, I have to do this, and I just do it, <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it does lighten everything. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I find that to be very true. Oh, yes. Yes, I I feel like it will help me get into my day tomorrow because my work has been very, very taxing and exactly the way you described it. it, I was asking for this prior to calling for some help with this, and and you talked exactly about what what I needed help with. And this is following the guidance. Mm -hmm. This This is what I was told to do, and... I'm doing what I was told to do. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. How many of you do have sacred altars? Anybody? I do. Yeah. I do. Okay. I have a few. 
Mm-hmm. 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 Few of you do. Okay. For the rest of you who have not yet created a sacred altar, it's important that you do that. It is essential. I'm going to ask any of you who do have a sacred altar to speak a little bit about how that has helped you in your life now that you have one. So those who are with us this evening who don't can hear what you have come to know. It may help them. Well, I have... Well, it's more than an altar. It's basically um, an altar in a room by itself where it's just sort of just a clear space where I can just be. And, uh, you know, I just try to keep that room sort of clear of any obstruction or anything that's distracting just so I can just sit sit in there and just be and just uh, perceive whatever's there and intuitively just sort of connect and, and feel. Okay. Is that anyone else? I've, I've I have... Uh, 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 go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead. This is Wait, one of you? Mm-hmm. One of you? <laughs> I guess we're waiting for you for the other to speak. Kathy, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, okay. I've found that it's a place that I can focus and clear, uh, you know, when my lower self is chattering at me, I can go to the altar and it's, it's the place that it all becomes clear and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it, you know, it's a, because of the nature of it and it does, the objects and the, the nature of it does change. I do change things because there are, as you said, sometimes things that don't need to be there any longer and something else will come in. And that's, a, you know, that I think is an important point that you brought up about that, too, that, you know, it doesn't have to be always the same. Because you're not. You're always evolving. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone else? There is something that we have. This is was taught to me way back when, and by and when I went to Peru and began teachings with the cattle, the pure blood descendants of the Inca. There is something that the Inca people have been doing for centuries. And that's something called a mesa. In the Spanish, we know that means table, but in Quechua, it means sacred altar. Some of you may have seen documentaries or seen in magazines when they find the mummies in the Andes. They will find little bundles um, next to them. They open those bundles, they'll find stones or other, other items in there, and they guess at what that is. What we know it is, it's a mesa. Okay, what is a mesa? Why is a mesa important? Joseph, so I'm going to ask you to mute the calls because I'm going to give some mesa teachings here. All right. Okay? Yep. Okay, a mesa... is the physical manifestation of your energetic body. Just as the physical body, when if, for, when you, for, if you go to a gym, you might want to go into the 100-pound weight room, but you know you can't do that yet. So you go into wherever you can and you strengthen until you're able to naturally, without thinking, pick up that weight. And then you can go to the next level. Our energetic bodies are that. This is the container 
that the energetic guidance, that higher perceptual primal guidance flows through. Our physical bodies are simply the horses we're riding on. But we are the ones that we, who are the higher perceptual primal self, through the energetic body, this is how we get through life. We don't take it through the lower self, through the stories, because as we all know, how much that can can cause such difficulties in the human body. Our energetic bodies are strong. We go through life sourcing through that higher self, and that is what gets us through. I can tell you, folks, there's been times in my life where the physical situations in my life were very, very, very difficult. Without my energetic body, I wouldn't be here right now. I can tell you that. So I can say to you that the Mesa is the physical manifestation of your energetic body. Traditionally, it is held on a cloth that is hand-woven. And on, the, on that cloth, there are different items that go on there. These are called kuya. Kuya are sacred beings of light. They are sentient. They take the forms of stones, of maybe little figures, all matter, but they will take a form, and those are what go in the mesa. When they all come together and one can perceive mesa, when one looks at it, one can see the energetic body in its form because it senses. It's through its perceptual senses you know this. So this is what would go on your sacred altar. Okay, how do you find Kuya? Well, you put your intent that you are knowing that you are to step in and you know that you are a Mesa carrier and that you know that you... Mesa is ringing true within you. The coup you find you, quite literally do. You can be in a place where there's a thousand stones and one will be pretty much jumping out at you, glowing, hi, I'm over here, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> this is Kuya. Okay, so when Kuya all go together on your Mesa cloth, you evolve, and as you evolve, so does your mesa. The kuya that may have been in your mesa when you first be, began to have one, as you evolve, they move on. That means that they come out of your mesa. Maybe they go back to the Pachamama. Maybe they go on your altar. Maybe they get passed along to someone else. But in this way, the sense of being intact is there. There's no separation anymore of the ordinary and the ordinary and the non-ordinary. It's all one. We know that it is, but this is in the having of a mesa, having a sacred altar. You know this to be so. Now, the cloth should be hand-woven. The, the strongest or the best cloth, I should say, that would hold me so is what we call mistana. These are Peruvian cloths. Tradition is that when a baby, when a, a person, a woman becomes pregnant, the people around her begin to weave a cloth to hold that baby when that baby is born. When that baby is born, the child is swaddled in that cloth until that child is too old to be. And then that cloth is given to the elders, the shamans, the medicine people, who then bring it into sacred ceremony. Pure life. Pure life. So we, ideally, the mastana is the cloth that we use. However, other Peruvian cloths can be used and Hand-woven cloth. It doesn't have to be Peruvian, but hand-woven is the best. Look at it this way, folks. Your mesa 
That cloth is your mesa, and that cloth is a garden. So that cloth is the foundation, is that the soil that you're planting seeds in. Those are the puya. So as that cloth, that cloth must be strong, it must be solid, it must be filled with life, which is why the hand woven is said to be the ones to use. So as kuya go in, they take root. Your energetic body begins to strengthen. Just like any other garden, we have to water it, we have to feed it. How do we do that? Well, traditionally, we use agua de florida, or Florida water. And this is where we take a little bit between our lips, and with pure intent of love and gratitude, pure, pure thanks, gratitude beyond any word that can say that, filled with moonlight, we spray that Florida water, Agodilla Florita, over the mesa, and that waters it and feeds it. Okay. Yeah, you can use um, sage, you can use sweet grass, you can use some of those, but this is what is the most ideal because this is the food that that is natural for it. I'm going to ask you to open the phones once more because I know some of you do have mesa. And I'd like to, I'd like you to offer what it is that you've come to know from before you had mesa and now that you do, how you've found how it helps you in your everyday life merging the non-ordinary into the ordinary. Well, I would say uh, since before I had it now, I've strengthened a lot in my energetic body. Um, as far as uh, things I'll notice, you know, uh, a lot of places I go, I want to take it with me just because I feel like uh, just having it there, having it present sort of um, uh, just makes the, whatever guidance is there clear to me at least. Um, mm-hmm and whatever mm-hmm. that uh, is needs to be done or, or needs to come about, um, just sort of, you know, it, it's necessary to have it there for whatever, you know, kind of work you're doing, um, or at least for the kind of work I do, you know, I feel it's necessary to have it with me. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, albeit there's some places I take it, some places I, I really can't take it, and just because... It's not really the kind of energy I want to to work with, <laughs> and I don't really want to have it there. But many places I you know mm-hmm. take it with. And, uh, well, you're being guided to to know where to bring it and when not to bring it, and that's so. That is so. That's good. Anyone else who has maze who would like to share uh, how it's been now that you do have Mesa? This is Kathy. Um, Before having a mesa, I had no real sense of my energetic body. And now with the mesa, it's a very, very much a rooting and a grounding and a a solidity energetic body. I can see and feel it um, and actually call on it. You know, it doesn't have to be right with me because it's me. It's mm-hmm. not, and I can call on it. And actually, just two days ago, I found myself in a a tizzy about whatever. I was just like really out of sorts, and I, I, I had the guidance to just pass it through the mesa, pass it through the mesa. You know, the mesa was in the other room, but just I did, and it, it was. The mesa takes that and transforms it into 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 light. Into you know, it was no longer 
anything for me to do. It was taken care of. I took care of it. Yeah, but so is the, it, you know, it, it's, uh, as you said, but really in real terms, the physical manifestation of the energetic body. Mm-hmm. It's great. Very good. Very good. This is bringing the non-ordinary into the ordinary. So you're in you're in a store and something is going on and you can feel things going a little crazy. Source through your mesa right there in that busy store. And not only does it bring you back into an intact state, it is felt beyond you. Mm-hmm. Remember what I do for my I do for myself, I do for the greater good, not because it serves me only, but because it serves us all. So by you sourcing through your mesa, in a place of of ordinary chaos, life chaos, it is felt, and it does make a difference. Yeah. Very well. Very well done. Anyone else about mesa? And anyone who has questions about it? I just have a clearer understanding of how to take these uh, the frenzy of my my days and 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 take them to the mesa now you know i feel very light in uh what i have coming ahead and uh how to handle some of this so i feel really good about that very good remember when you take things through your energetic body you are sourcing through the pure primal higher perceptual self. You're not sourcing through the lower self stories at all, through the human who creates stories, who lives in old beliefs. You're not passing it through any of that. You are going well beyond it, so there can't be any of that. And in that way, there's no, no hooks, nothing to catch you. Because you're flying way, way, way above that. Excellent. Anyone else? Anything about Mesa? These are excellent teachings. And I am delighted and honored that you're all here to gain these. Anyone? Okay. So what I think we'll do now is we're going to take a little bit of a journey. We're going to fly again, see the Kepatra, and see what's flowing now. What are the differences from when we did this last time? What do you know now? What do you perceive? And the teachings of Mesa you who have been with Mesa for a while or you who are new to it, see how that is, how it is essential in the working to help. To help what's happening. So I'm going to ask you, Joseph, to put everybody on mute and we will get on. All right. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to ask all of you to center and ground. You who have mesas, your mesas should be with you. For those of you who have whatever is sacred to you, it is always good to have that with you. or at least source through all that, certainly that. Center and ground.
as we stand upon Mother Earth, Pachamama, let the tensions of life, of your day, flow through you and to the Pachamama. For she takes all this and mulches it so that it brings forth life. And as we begin to fly now, knowing that your physical bodies are safe and secure, held by the sacred ones of light, the Pachamama, safe and secure, fully present for when you return. We fly now above the trees, the forest, the waters, the oceans, into the sky, past the clouds. Star Condor, our guide here, welcomes us. Holding us safe and secure, the wings of Star Condor, we perceive the Kepacha, the energetic grid of the Pachamama. Perceive this as you will. Through vision, through sight, through sound, through color, through weight, through texture, however it is that you perceive, perceive this as it flows. This kepacha, where is it lightened? Where has it become dim? Where is it heavy? Where is it intact? Perceive, if you will, the colors. If you, if you will. Sense it. And as we fly and we perceive this flow of the Kepacha, perceive mesas throughout the world. Whether it be the mesa of the Inca or the sacred altars of any, any path of light. Perceive the grid that is created by each and every one of us having this sacred altar. See as it strengthens, perceive as it strengthens the Kepacha, bringing us together in the one that we are, uniting us. We are one. It is through the sacred, the merging of the non-ordinary into the ordinary, through the sacred, this is seen, this is known, this is self, and this is told, sung. Go higher and deeper now. Perceive what we must all do now. So the energetic waves that are here do not become shock waves. These energetic waves of strength, gentle strength as it comes to ground, bringing pure, pulsing, vital life. Does not have to be the shock waves. Does not have to be. We cannot do this alone. We must do this together now. Perceive the mesas, the sacred altars of light flowing through the Kepacha. 
Know that you know it is what it is. The unseen to the seen. The unknown to the known. The unspoken to the spoken. We can do this, for we are one. your intent. To step in. A vessel of light, a guide of light, a vessel of light that you are honoring, actively participating in the vow of life you took well before you were ever born into any body. Now is the time. You can make it so. (laughs) Giving your gift of thanks, of this deep gratitude and love, compassion to Star Condor. Return now to your physical body, passing the clouds to the skies, the mountains, the jungles, the trees, the forests, the plains, the deserts, the waters. now to your current physical body and the time and place where you are, fully, fully returning to your current physical body, fully grounded, fully here. Be here, be present, be here. Joseph, you can open the phone. Everybody back? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know it's nice to stay where we are, but we, you know, we got to be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did you What did you perceive, folks? You who have traveled, journeyed with us before, you who are new, what have you perceived? This is very strange, but I perceived a bird fetus. Mhm. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. New life is here, you know. Mhm. I anyone else? This time, I heard the of the song of the the many the many mesas, the many the many different uh, columns of light coming up that went into one song, one one beautiful tone. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Usually I see myself, but this time I saw another woman. Um, maybe she was from Peru, and I okay. could only see the back side of her, and then she was flying over, looking down, and there was just billions of little lights 
flickering. Just the whole world was lit up, little lights everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perceiving the rainbow and the colors that it actually is beyond the one that we are taught that it is. Mm-hmm. Exquisite beyond description. Yes. Anyone else? Did any or all of you perceive why it is essential that we have Mesa or sacred altar? What did you see why that is vital that we do that? Anybody? To to be with with one. Mm -hmm. I would say say because it's a sacred space or contained sacred space is really the way that um, intuition and guidance can come through into the physical merging the non-ordinary into everyday ordinary life very physically this is what connects us to sacredness mm-hmm. I perceive the the Mesa as connected to the Pachamama and going then into the Kepacha as a mm-hmm. yeah as connecting the two through us yeah with all due respect to the masculine the sacred feminine is at the forefront now It is through the sacred feminine that the shock wave does not have to happen. Our physical bodies are built to both give and receive. We receive life and we give it. Our physical bodies are built to do that. So if we know that our physical bodies are, can, are built to do that naturally, perceive now what our energetic bodies, our higher perceptual primal selves can do. The word amazing doesn't even begin to describe that. The sacred masculine is of equal importance because the sacred masculine Male bodies are built to project. They project life. This is why many men can find it difficult to receive. But it is within them the ability to do that because we are both masculine and feminine, feminine, but there is the primary. That which is, and this is not gender. We're not talking about gender one bit. We're talking about the energetic. So men do come to know that, Joseph being a prime example of that, that the weaving of all that you perceived at the Kepacha, those lights, the rainbow lights that you saw, We are weaving that. And this is why the merging of the non-ordinary and ordinary is a natural flow that each and every one of us can do always. You don't have to work at this. It's already happening and and has always been, is now and always will be. Does that inspire you? Folks, does that hearten you to know that there is essential hope, that there is hope, 
that there is life and will continue to do so because there is light, eternal. Mm -hmm. Does that inspire you, folks? Yes. Yes. Didn't doubt it. What do you know, each and every one of you, know that you can do, know that you must do, that it can no longer be you, the lower self personal, but that what must be done in the one that we are. Energetically, we already are one. How is it in the physical that we must manifest that one? What do you now know? And as you ask yourself that and answer that, ask yourself this too. Are you willing to do whatever it takes unconditionally? What if any of you have to say about that? Anybody? I'd like to say yes, and I really, I think in my deepest self, I, I do. Um, I, I would be willing to do it unconditionally, um, to act out of my highest self, I, I guess, thinking. <laughs> Yes, well, see, this is where, man. and this is what this is what we say. Okay, um, with due respect, whoever whoever is the heavy breather, <laughs> 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 a little quieter in the breathing, please. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> You see, this is when the lower self wants to get in the way. Because you see, remember, the lower self wants to stay safe. It was born, it's going to die, and it's terrified every second. This is going to be that moment. So it's going to create all of its stories and its illusions that stay safe, stay safe. No, 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 not now, no. What do you mean unconditional? Ah, yikes. So this is (laughs) when the lower self carries on like that, that we say, what I have said to my lower self and uh, my lower self actually gets it, maybe pouts a bit, sulks a bit, but does get it, is stop it, drop it, I got this, step back. And if she is actually going to pay more attention, I'll say move on. But stop it, drop it, I got this. Any of you been using that? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Well, you might want to try it. It works. <laughs> yeah, I say stop. Uh-huh. But you see, by adding in stop it, drop it, move on, I got this, you're telling your lower self that you who are the higher perceptual primal self are the one that's the primary. Okay. That you're the one that makes the decisions. That way the lower self knows that it's not being permitted to source through those stories and make decisions based on those stories. Gotcha. It does work. And the wonderful part about that, it actually learns. Days can go past, many days go past, and you don't even have to say it. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) Ladies, I'm going to say this to you. Now, as I've said, we're going to Peru several times next year. And most, almost all of the journeys to Peru, except one, are both for men and women. But there is one that's just for women. Women only. And this is to Apple Falcon Pai and to the ancient sacred temples where in the time of the Inca and before that even, where the priestesses of light brought women, young girls, into womanhood through initiation. We're going to those places. 
It's necessary. It's essential that we do. So all of you may consider that. What did they do? The initiations? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, they can't be spoken of. Some things are not to be spoken of. Oh. And, and can only be... All I can say is that just like with any initiation, one must pass through given tasks to reach another level. These are initiations. And these are, this is what happens in these places that we're going to. I only ask because I've seen some of them on television, mostly in Africa. Yeah. I mean, there's initiations of all types all over the world and all different traditions. Mm-hmm. All the form suits the place from which it comes, but the intent is the same. Mm-hmm. To bring a person into fullness, into complete. Mm-hmm. And this is where your lower self is going to give you every reason justifiable, so it says. Well, you shouldn't do it. Now, this is what I'm... And and mind you, this is not a push for you to do it or not. You will know if you're to be with us or not. Simply that. But I will tell you this. There are many things that I've been guided to do that later on I looked at that and said, you know, if I had let my lower self get in the way and and said, no, 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 I wouldn't have the joy within me that I have now. I wouldn't be at peace. I would not have found the peace that is within me now, irregardless of whatever the physical actions might have been. The thing is, do it anyway. So I know we are getting close to the completion of this call this evening. But what have you got, folks, any of you, about what we have worked with tonight? Beginning with dreams, and we can always bring that always in, and the merging of the non-ordinary into the ordinary. What if you have come to me and Mesa, sacred altars? All of the work in the various aspects is it's what will bring the light clearly into the world, all of the aspects. And each, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I've got. Yeah. Yes. So that means, Kathy, you're going to Salkantar with us next year, right? Well, when you said that, as soon as you said that, I got shivers up my arms, and I said, oh, no. (laughs) No. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That was the little self saying, oh, no, oh, no. Yes. All I can say this, and I'm, I'm not, you know, I will never, never, never reach anyone's confidentiality, but I can tell you that I've known Kathy for some time and I've seen her do things that she knew that her lower self told her there's no way you can do this and I've seen her do it so (laughs) for uh, for real (laughs) (laughs) so without question so how about the rest of you I'll tell you there's a show on called Naked and Afraid Oh no! Is that what it's called? Could something they go into the uh, um, they go out. They leave their clothes behind, and they spend 21 days out in the jungles and things like that. Naked. And it's on. It's on. Yeah, naked. And if they want to wear something, they better find something and make it. You know, 
to cover themselves. Otherwise, they are naked. And they're allowed to bring one thing each, like a fire okay. starter and maybe a cup or something like that. Or, yeah. mm-hmm. But every time I watch Adam, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that so but Not naked, but, you know... <laughs> Well, well, I can tell you, Allison, that yes, we are going to the jungle, and no, you don't have to be naked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, good. you don't have to be naked. <laughs> At least not the physical body doesn't have to be naked. Uh, <laughs> so wonderful. That, that would just be, uh, that would be awesome. Well, we are going to the jungle two parts of the Amazon next year, into the northern part, and and then later into the southern part. And yes, we do camp in the jungle, in the rainforest itself. And it is beyond description. I can tell you that. So, oh man. Yeah, well, okay. (laughs) It's, I lived in the jungle, folks. I lived there for about three months. Mm-hmm. Cried like a baby the day I was going to leave. The guys, these big strapping men that carry machetes and all big, strong, and they couldn't handle a tiny, a small, crying woman. They just, okay, it's okay, you're going to come back. I, st- I can't stop crying. And <laughs> Folks, I'm going to give you this. This is the merging the non-ordinary into the ordinary. You have most of the necessities of life when we go into the jungle. We have tents. We have food. How would it be? Envision this, folks. Here we are in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, the jungle itself, the real deal. There's a full moon. We have sacred fire. All the sacred ones of the jungle are with us. We are dying to what was old life and spinning new life in in the midst of that death. How would that how would that be, folks, for you to be there? Any of you? Awesome then I could leave this world happy. Mm-hmm. Well, you can already do that. Yeah. Well, I've never done anything like that. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay, folks, I know we're very close to the close now. Whatever you have to say, about what you've come to know, about what you can do in very simple ways, quite simple ways in your everyday life, merging the non-ordinary into the ordinary. So that others can share with the wisdom that you're being given. And then we will say thanks to the sacred ones of light before we close. Anyone? I do encourage... Yes, go ahead. That it is... It, it, this, the sacred is, is not something that is separate from us, that it's not something that, you know, we have to go to a special place or or, you know, do special things, really. But to, the important thing is to, to be at every moment. And that will change. That will... People will see it. They'll feel it. They'll sense it and get hope. That it's not... Yeah. It's the small. It's, as you've said, you know, the very smiling at somebody. And it really is. You know, that it's not a grand thing that you have to, you know, prepare for and do. But it's in the everyday, in the everyday. A simple change of thought. 
simple mm-hmm. change of thought. If you find yourself, your lower mm-hmm. self starting to to write a grumpy thought, change that thought before it becomes grumpy. I did that this week. I did that a lot, every day. Wonderful. Yeah. Made a difference, huh? Mm-hmm. Huge. Mm-hmm. And the gift that you gave yourself, you gave it to all. Mm-hmm. Not only in this place, this Pachamama, but beyond. It does make that much of a difference, folks. People often ask, but only, what can I do? I'm only one person. Mm. You're a human, only one human, that's true. But if you were to shake off the human, what's left? Pure energy, that's why we are one. So what you do does, in fact, impact on all when you do it consciously. It does anyway, but when you can do it consciously, then it goes from anything that's grumpy into something that serves all. Wonderful. So let us give our thanks to the sacred ones of light. So it's like you have to move your car. Apunya, <laughs> Atun will be punchai. Atun will be kanchai. Thank you. We thank you. With the deepest gratitude that we are the deepest love that we are to all of you who are the sacred ones of life, sacred mountains, you who are Mother Moon, Father Sun, Pachamama, Mother Earth, all of you are the sacred ones of life. Thank us. Thank you. We are your vessels of light. We will step in when and as we are called to do whatever, however, however long we're called to do it, wherever we're called to do it without concern or distraction. We are deeply honored, deeply humbled, and deeply grateful to be called by your vessels and guides of life. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Fran. We will meet again next week. That was beautiful. That was. Thank you. Inada. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.